All right. Woo. Okay. Hello, beautiful ones. As you stream in, please give me a little wave. Say hello. If you can hear me, see me, all good. Please let me know as well. That will be very, very useful. And I am just dropping in right here where there is literally um, my voice streaming through. So I think it should be working. Let me know. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I will be starting in just a moment, making sure you can all see me because I'm not seeing any comments at the moment. So I just want to make sure that it is up and running properly before I dive right in. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can see the comments. Let me just make sure if you can see. Please let me know, making sure, okay, I can see some hearts coming through. I presume that you can hear me okay, yeah? Please let me know where you're calling in from, where you're streaming in from, where you're joining from. I love to connect with you in the energy field. Tammy, I can see you, all right. Hi, Sarah. All right. Lorian. Okay, I can see the comments streaming in. Lorian, hello from Portland, Oregon. Beautiful. Tammy from California. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, beautiful. Southern Utah, Nani. Beautiful. All right, beautiful women coming through. All right, so... Ah, taking a deep breath just to settle into this beautiful, beautiful sacred space. If you're joining me here live, please say hello. Make sure you dial into the energy space as well, because as you speak, you are making yourself known in the energy space as well, as well as to me, of course, but most importantly, you're making your presence known. So that is the most beautiful thing you could do. All right. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. I'm very, very excited today to talk a little bit more about what is the mystery. And to begin with, hi Becky, welcome. Beautiful to see you, gorgeous Becky. All right, so to all of you who are coming in today, I would love to hear from you what drew you into this space, what drew you into this live session. If you'd like to share, of course, that would be a most beautiful thing. If you would like to share, yes. if not, it's all good. I'm just making sure that you can see me here as well, okay? <sighs> All right, so today when we talk about unleashing limitless potential at the mystery skate, I must start off by sharing this story because the most important thing that I wish for you all to know is that there is a code in this live session that I'm dropping in. I try my best to put it into words, but what is coming through, th through my voice and through my entire being is the emanation of what we call the limitless source, the infinite, the primordial energy. And this is important as we dive into what we are speaking about today, which is limitless potential, because there is this beautiful thing about being the limitless, coming home to remembrance, remembering that we are all an expression of the infinite, all that is. What you may know of as the quantum field, what you may know of as the unified field. And so if this is something you have been working on, that you have been tapping into, 
that you have been cultivating. I'd love to hear from you where you are in your journey. And Becky, as always, of course, of course, Becky has been journeying with me as one of my clients. And there have been so many beautiful unfolding as we continue to embrace the truth of who we all are as she is embracing who she really is. And this is the core of the, 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 the power that we're going to journey towards. So we're going to go one, um, we're going to go on a ride, I would say, together because it has to be unpeeled in a way so that you can really feel the potential and the power of what you hold already within you. Okay, we are going to turn the light inward, back home within, from the individuation journey that we are currently on, so that you come back to unity consciousness, so that you come back to the limitlessness of who you really are. So that is the mystery. That is essentially the mystery gate that I am talking about. We all have this potential within us. And if this is the first time that you're joining me, welcome. My work is all about working, mastering the mystery. Mastery in the mystery is my work. I'm primarily known as a Chadao ceremonial keeper and spiritual mentor. Chadao, if this is the first time you're hearing it, Chadao is the way of tea. It is a way of living where we honor tea as a modality of self-cultivation, as a plant spirit medicine, and as a ceremony. So my intention is to help women to truly live as the sacred, to truly live in ceremony in every way, not just in the ceremony itself, but in every aspect to see the extraordinary in the ordinary, to actually witness her life unfold in miraculous ways. Because ultimately, the only one who's here is divinity. That is you. Ultimately, when we, even in moments, and this is what I intend for you to really embody, Nani is saying that's incredibly beautiful, indeed, I really want you to feel the frequency of these words because I don't just want you to walk away with this idea that we are the divine. I want you to really feel the potentiality within you. In fact, I want to awaken that within you so that you can take the aligned actions going forward. Okay? So really allow yourself to open your heart up, to tune into the frequency of today's live session. I am not interested in changing your mind. I want to open your heart because the power to return to source to return to the infinite, to return to really embodying your limitless potential is through love. It's through unconditional love, the highest love, the highest truth, the highest frequency of all, that which is love. So we're going to tap deeper into how we're going to go into this world. How are we going to go into unconditional love? How are we going to unleash your limitless potential? Okay. So as I was saying, working with T has been uh, an incredible, incredibly profound self-cultivation as a gateway it's been able to really awaken the stargates, let's just put it that way, the stargates within the women that I've been working with, the multidimensional women that I work with. And as I sit here speaking to you, I find myself truly feeling the truth that I am, an expression of the divine. I don't question it. 
wherever I go, even if you met me at, I don't know, at a festival where I'm sipping on juice and you're eating burger and maybe you met me in an elevator, I would still say the same thing to you. I do not waver. I do not hide who I am. And it is because I know that when I stand as the truth of who I am, I am in the highest service to all. And when I am in the highest service to all, my reality rearranges and shifts at quantum speed to meet me at my energetic level. Okay? That which is love, that which is the highest truth, that which is my true essence as divinity. And what that means is limitless potential, limitless abundance, health, vitality, harmony, peace within, liberation, okay, reverence. And I honestly, and this is something I really am so grateful for, is that there is sacred reverence in everything that I live every single day. There is sacred reverence, even like I'm just watching the light coming through my body here. It makes me feel so much. It feels like I'm being guided and held by angelic wings as I guide you, as I move through the frequency and share my wisdom with you. This is how I live. This is how I am. And I do not question. I do not waver. But to just go back a couple of months, maybe two years ago, three years ago, I wouldn't have recognized this version of me. But things are shifting so quickly around me that it is just incomprehensible when it comes to time. And this is the truth about time and space. Time and space that is linear does not really exist. It's man-made. Where we are really is we are in a spiral space. We are in this spiral where even what you think is your past, is happening in a parallel timeline to everything that you are perceiving as your present moment. Because what there is truly is only the now. And if you do not feel this truly, maybe your mind is resisting this, I will ask you, if you have had any moments when you would look back on a memory and you would feel different emotions about it. Perhaps there was a memory that you felt so much resentment and anger about at first. And then maybe 10 years later, maybe two years later, maybe a week later, you think about the memory and it feels like, well, nah, actually it happened all in, in my favor. I'm, I'm thankful that happened because then I don't have to do all of those. I don't have to go through all of that trouble anymore, right? Well, thank God that happened. So I didn't have to spend a longer time realizing that they didn't, um, they weren't sincerely in the relationship with me, so on and so forth, right? If anyone has experienced that before, you would understand what I'm saying about there is really no past. Literally, there is also no future. There are only now. The now is here. That's all there is. But because we are in this dimension, everything looks and feels like it is in a structure of linear timeline. So I have to do this to get to this, and then I need to take this airplane so that I can get to this. So in a sense, when we are in the consciousness, in the awareness that we are in almost like what we call a simulation of a dimension that we are here, that we chose to come here so that we can master multidimensionality, 
so that perhaps you chose to master something very specific in the individuation journey from pure formlessness, pure awareness that is literally unity consciousness, you came through individuated so that when you return to unity consciousness as a formless being again, a spirit again, you can bring more frequency, bring more unity, power. Your infinite power contributes to the collective unity consciousness. This is how we contribute to the collective awakening. This is a whole other level of you know, um, mastery that we go deep into in my mentorship spaces. And this is where I am going deeper and deeper in my work. And so if you are here, I want you to know this. For 10 years of my life, I suffered from lack of self-love. I wanted to control every aspect of my life. And there were moments when I literally had thoughts of taking my own life. And I had many years of anorexia and eating disorders, okay? So I lived deeply entrenched in a lot of comparisonitis, overthinking, deep self-hate. And really, the only thing that kept me going was my ambition and my drive to prove to everyone that somehow I am lovable or useful or, you know, worthy. Yeah. Has anyone else felt that way before as well? You can absolutely share if you are one of those right now going through perhaps what I had just mentioned or you have done so and now you're out of it and you're cultivating a more virtuous, um, awakened lifestyle, whatever it is, you know, please do share. I'd love to connect with you and also dive into that with you. And Violet definitely can relate. Yes, Jana. Is it Jana? I'm still working on it. Okay, Violet, I practice more self-love, but I still struggle sometimes. Okay. All right. We'll move into that together. Okay. So I was, um, so as I mentioned, I had anorexia for about 10 years of my life and it came to a time, it came to a point where it was really about, you know, life or death. Like, do you want to live or do you want to keep living like this until the day you kill yourself basically? And if anything I've mentioned and said here is triggering for you, I honor you if you would like to switch off for what, for this short moment as I share this. And um, I, I, I really want to share my truth in every sense of the word so I don't mince my reality in that sense. So when that happened, that was how I felt. And as I said, as I observe now, the observer observing the observed, it feels different. But in the moment at that time, I definitely felt like I needed to make a choice. And Noni is saying, I've come into my awakening through many um, recent losses. Yeah. And you deeply appreciate hearing truth. All right. Thank you. So. Going through all of that, um, I really had to come to a point where I decide, I had to decide like, do I want to live or do I want to go on living in this way and until eventually mm, my life is taken from me in whichever way, you know, starving myself or, you know, literally I had injuries caused by over-exercising and under-eating and all of that. And I made a decision, you know, I said to myself, like, I really want to live. I really want to live without any fear. And at that point, it was literally fear of eating. That's all. I didn't want to hide away anymore because I had no social life because I was so afraid 
that things would be out of control if I went out to have external things like friends or party or whatever that was out of out of my control so I had zero social life because of that and that was years and years in the making and so I said okay I'm going to make a change I'm going to go two feet into recovery no matter what I'm going to do this and I remember my 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 intention in every way whatever that happens is that I will do what makes me feel really uncomfortable but I want to do it. I know I want to do it, but it makes me uncomfortable. And so everything that made me feel uncomfortable, but I literally could feel like the feeling of, you know, the only way I can describe it is like the feeling of like I'm salivating over it. Like I'm like, I want this, but I'm afraid of the what would happen if I went for it. I would go for it. So that it rewired my neural pathways at a time, at my time of thinking, is that it would change the way I feel about those things that I feared. And I didn't, I literally remember thinking like, well, that didn't kill me, so I'm going to, I'll be okay. And then that was how I kept recovering. And eventually I reached a place where I was fully recovered. I wasn't afraid of food in any way anymore. I ate, my weight plateaued, it became, it came to a point where it escalated obviously, I was bloating and having all the side symptoms of recovery and then it started to drop, the weight started to drop and I started to lean into more um, meditative practices like yoga and meditation and I started to astral travel in my meditation as well. And then I had a Kundalini awakening. I started to really feel myself moving through my body. And all of these things made me really curious. It made me really curious about what exactly is happening. And mind you, this is why I firmly, firmly say this all the time because I have 100% belief in this and experience in this. You can self-cultivate for many years without knowing what you're doing, without the guidance of a mentor. That was what was happening to me. Basically, I was like, okay, I, I read this book, you know, a self-help book, and I was watching YouTube videos of people talking about law of attraction and all of that, and meditation and yoga but I had no idea what I was experiencing. I had no idea what I was doing really. And it went on for about a year in and then, you know, picking up, you know, pigeon advice from Instagram and YouTube and all of the stuff. And eventually I came to a point where I felt like, okay, I'm doing all the things they say to do on the YouTube videos and stuff like that, but why do I still feel like I cannot take my practice out of my meditation space? Why do I still feel like, you know, missing the MTR makes me go crazy or like when I'm sitting in the office and my boss was having a bad day, that affects me and why am I still comparing myself to that girl, blah, 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 blah all the stuff, right? And still feeling like, still feeling like, oh, I need to um, depreciate my self-worth so that someone else can appear to be more um, appreciated. Like, you know, all the things we do, like we are so deeply conditioned to do, it's like, oh, don't shine too bright. Don't walk into a room and tell everyone uh, you're the best or, you know, like, uh, or like, um, don't love yourself too much. People will think you're so big hated. Like, you know, all the things, all the things. So I was really curious. Like, I was like, well, it's interesting because in the meditation, I feel so whole and complete. I even go way out into space. What am I doing? And I had no teacher, I had no mentor. So I was like, I had zero idea what I was doing. And I remember, you know, I was coming to a really good place because I literally manifested um, a, a man that is who is now my husband. And I was like, wow, everything is happening. But why do I feel like I'm going to self-sabotage? Like what's going on? 
And then I got down on my knees and I asked the universe, literally because everyone on YouTube videos say that, <laughs> right? And I was like, universe, please show me a way. I feel like there's so much more out there, but I'm not sure what it is. Please show me the way. And then I, I did it and then I just kind of forgot about it, like literally. And then maybe about a week or two later, I received an invitation. I was working in the media back then. I was working at the beauty and fashion luxury desk and I got an invitation and it was an invitation to a tea ceremony. And the tea ceremony was something that, you know, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. I love tea. And why not? You know? And then when I, when I went into the tea ceremony, everything came home everything, all the memories, or rather I would say all the parallel timelines that has really happened, you know, in every sense of the word, it was more than just a vision. It was literally a floodgate that opened, you know, I've mentioned this before in uh, several of my live sessions and interviews where the first thing I saw was really a vision of my grandmother sitting next to the cauldron and feeling the return of so many women in my bloodline, my grandmother, my great grandmother, my great great grandmother and beyond the ones that I have never even known. And that cauldron's significance is so big because it literally is the medicine. And I remember growing up, you know, when I was a young kid, like really seeing very briefly because obviously as a child, I didn't really care much, right? Like I was just in my own world, but I really remember the feeling of dedication that my grandmother had sitting next to the cauldron, making sure that the medicinal soup is boiled to perfection. That's why she was sitting next to it for hours. She would not leave her seat until it's done. And then the moment came when I drank the bowl of tea and it was a ceremony held in silence. You know, the woman who was serving, my, my dear tea sister, she was serving in silence and each one of us would just pick up the bowl after she served us and we would drink. And when I was drinking, the, I heard tea spirits speak to me. I heard the mandate, my heavenly mandate, which is you have to drop everything you know and go and serve tea. And this was something that I held very closely to my heart and I still hold very closely to my heart because it still applies every single day, every single day. In that moment, it was an invitation for me to be initiated into the way, into the way of tea, to serve in ceremony, to walk this way in devotion. But right now, as I listen back to these words again, it's literally every day, dropping everything I know and serve. Yeah. Christy is saying, I know all the strategies that reduce my sense of worth in the time to keep myself safe, breaking this way of being slowly. Yeah. It is not even a way of real being, if you think about it, Christy. It is literally an illusion. And the only reason why I know it's a, a, an illusion is because it can change very quickly. You can decide now to change it. That's why it's an illusion. The minute you come back to the truth of who you are as the infinite, as the expression of the divine, knowing that you are divinity in a human form, it changes. So it's like you broke through the veil of illusion. It's not real. What is true is always love. What is true is your highest truth. What is true is that you are infinite. What is true is all that is, that you are all that is. You are the one who creates this reality that you're living in. And this is where I want to go deeper into because 
whenever we walk this path, it gets really interesting when we realize that, oh, wow, I am an expression of the divine. I can tell you right now, embodying this has taken me down such a journey where there were moments when at first it was very much like this illusionment because when I was first held in the gaze of the goddess and this happened very like potently after I started walking the way of tea and serving and being in service to clients, women coming into my world and this way of tea being in ceremony with tea spirit is a powerful means. It's a powerful journey rather. I don't like the means because what means really mean is that it's a means to an end, but there has never been an end to this journey. However, I would say, what I would say is that it is a portal. Working with tea in this way, in ceremony, it opens a portal for you to walk into your vortex of stillness. Now this vortex of stillness is the key to enter into the frequency of all that is. Here we go into nothingness. Yes, we return back to the unity consciousness and for the ones who, I, I, what I would say about the unity consciousness is that if you have seen the yin and yang symbol, the tai chi symbol, that is actually a sign of wholeness. But what I find really interesting is when we go back to speaking about unity, the Tai Chi symbol, which you know of as the yin and yang, you know, the one with the, the white and black, and then there's a black dot in the white one, and there's a, a white dot in the black one, right? When we go back to unity, it's a complete, uh, complete circle. So there is no, separ no separation of black and white. It's just a circle. Okay, so that is the very beginning that is the very, very origin, that is your primordial origin, your infinite, your limitlessness. That's why in Chinese, it's called Wu Ji, limitless. No borders, no boundaries, it's limitless, okay? And what happens is that when it broke apart duality happened you know um, and why did it break apart the easiest way i can say it and this is something again we i, I speak of but i really want to emphasize in my mentorships i don't just want you to hear these concepts you get to experience this and that is the highest level of mastery because too many times there are a lot of things where you hear and you're like intellectually getting it. Again, going back to my time, you know, without a mentor or a guide or a teacher. But when we experience it and when we have someone who's guiding us through the way, we understand that there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance between yin and yang, the duality, and then ultimately transcend duality. What does this mean? How does that look like? It means we get that this life, it's all in duality and we know that it is a game. What does that mean? That means we can see beyond the duality. We don't have a preference in the sense of the word of, oh, I love yin or I love yang or, you know, the, the kind of preference we have. Or maybe we have this tendency to really judge like, oh, that's good or this is bad. We have 
this discernment yes however we can also see beyond the duality and see the wholeness in it and the way i can describe it is that when you see again going back to the symbol of the yin yang the tai chi symbol you see it as wholeness you don't see it as a separation as most of the people would do in fact i would go further to say the symbol itself is so perfect that's why i love to bring up the symbol all the time when i'm speaking in a conceptual way because every part let's go to one side the white side in the white side which is the yang side there is a black dot in it the black dot is the yin side this tiny dot contains the entirety of yin inside of the yang it's not just one part of yin it's the entirety of yang in there and so when we gretchen that's an amazing question i'll dive a little bit deeper into that give me a moment so when we go into the yin side we have the little white dot of yang in there that is also a fractal of the yang and it contains the entirety of yang inside of the yin and so in the same way as we sit here me leaning you gretchen you becky you christy you nani we are all fractals of the divine and you are a fractal of me and i'm a fractal of you and so on and so forth and it's all a holographic blossom this is why we are infinite okay we carry within us the universal impulse the cosmic life force that is one and the same as the infinite desire to experience itself that is why duality is created and of course as the infinite creates this fractal what is included is what we call free will yes so with free will you get to decide do i want to experience life as the divine or do i decide to go into the negative polarity where there is uh, what we call the unawakened individuals but not in a way that i'm judging it's simply a different side of reality and it doesn't mean they cannot come back to the pos positive polarity most of us have done so i have you know i was living in the darkness for so long in the very linear experience of life where i thought i had to work so hard that i have to prove my worthiness and yet here i am sitting here talking to you about living truly with the truth that i am the expression of the divine and this experience of life is so miraculous in all its ways and this is the truth yeah as i give i expand massively energetically and as i receive i also expand massively energetically and this is the infinite symbol that keeps coming and going is infinite and this is anchored in my truth which is everything is happening for us through us as us and this is important as Gretchen is saying is this life an illusion to be honest sometimes I would say yes and other times I would say this is an experience for you to uncover as I feel into this question I would actually ask you 
What makes a memory a memory? And what makes a vision or a desire something that you mentally perceive of as something you don't have yet? What if they are actually one and the same? Yes? Nani is saying, I love how you describe the fractal reality. I so get this. Your, the synthesis of, your synthesis of wisdom is simply beautiful. Thank you so much, Nani. So, as we come back to what I just shared, maybe let's go into the question of, okay, wow, this sounds amazing. How do we do this then? <laughs> right? How do we experience life as the divine? How do I embrace the truth that there is only one of us here, that I am the infinite, that I am the all that is, that I am that I, that I, am that I desire to be? Because if it didn't exist in your field, you wouldn't have that desire, period. You wouldn't know it. Yes? So let's take a moment here because most of humanity always says, Oh, I wish for great health. I wish for great wealth. Uh, I wish for the most amazing relationship in the world. I wish for a big house or I want to fly first class. I want to do this. I want to travel around the world. I want to learn, right? And my question to you, if you are saying, I want all of that and you're saying it's in my field, but why isn't it what I'm living? My question to you is, do you truly believe in those things as you? wholeheartedly wholeheartedly because wholeheartedly is the frequency of unconditional love and when i say unconditional love it is the love it is the frequency of the cosmic life force cosmic consciousness is at that frequency and love may be experienced as something very differently for many different ones of you. However, this is why we have to have a self-cultivation practice like the way of tea to enter that reset point, the void, the zero point field, the vortex of stillness is what I call it so that you can slow things down so much where your mind doesn't stand in the way and you open your heart where the love is felt and you connect with the higher dimensional frequencies that which is cosmic consciousness it is in pure profound stillness that you meet your cosmic self. That is the standard. When you experience it, you get to anchor that in to this dimension through your body. And this is something I take you through in the mentorship as well. And you get to experience it so powerfully because your reality is going to rearrange itself and shift so freaking fast that you will be like, I feel so different from who I was just two days ago. And I keep experiencing that over and over again. I don't know time anymore, to be honest. And of course, there's also timekeeping in this dimension because in the 3D, we, we still have to make sure we arrive somewhere on time that we meet and said we will meet at 4 and we will meet at 4, you know, so on and so forth. But at the same time, like Gretchen saying, is this life an illusion? I would say maybe this life is more like a game, a really high level game. Right? 
So, yes, Becky is saying it is truly amazing. I've experienced this and let it be known. You will continue to experience this higher and higher and higher. And the real difference is, and Gretchen saying that's very powerful, yes, an intricate game. The really powerful thing we must learn is to anchor this in. What does that mean? We must be willing to go deep. We must be willing to go deep and stay the course and hold this truth even when it looks like externally things are coming at us. Like, I didn't ask for that. Why is that happening? There are many reasons for that and I won't be able to go into all of that. If I could, I would be very honest to say that it is between our transmissions when we're in the mentorship space. This is what Becky experiences as well. It's like when we are in the energy, energetic field as soul to soul, we can, I can tap into what's going on. It could be many lifetimes of karmic residue. It could be something that is carried within you unconsciously, so on and so forth. Okay. So it is so important for us to understand that when we need something that looks like externally is coming at us, Firstly, to remember that it is all happening for us, through us, as us. So you most likely could have chosen that alchemical pointer, as I would say, before you came into this form. So if something keeps happening in your life over and over again, I'm going to invite you to ask yourself, can I make a decision today to let this go now? Meaning, I am going to decide this is no longer my reality. Yes, because you hold the keys to your creation as the creator creating your creation. And Gretchen, to answer your question, I have many, many teachers. I have many teachers in tea. I have many mentors. I continue to invest in myself. I do not stinge on my mentorship. This is one thing I never sting on, <laughs> if ever. I don't really sting on a lot of things, to be honest. I really live in the frequency of luxury because I truly believe, and this is what I'm here to guide women to, is that we are all sacred luxury. So luxurious spaciousness, luxurious clothing, education, the best mentorship, and the, the one thing I'm going to share with you, again, going back to what I said about the infinite loop, the more I give, the more I expand and the more I get to receive. And as I receive, I expand again and then I get to give more. This is how it works. And it really is so powerful when you decide that that is your reality. That is me. I am the infinite. Of course, I am wealth. I choose to experience it. I am abundance. I choose to experience it. I am love. I choose to experience it. And boom, things rearrange around you. And when I say rearrange, I'm going to be very transparent with you. Firstly, when I raise my standards to be the expression of the divine, a lot of things in my life fell away. And I had to make some really difficult decisions in my life to walk away from some spaces too. Friends who are no longer serving. Friendships that no longer resonate. Yes. Mentorship spaces even. Mentors. Teachers. And so it is so important to allow the release to happen, to allow the decomposition to happen. And that's why I wanted to say to you that yes, you get to live as the expression of the divine, but when the rearrangement happens in your life, when it includes some kind of release, letting go, falling away, you have to remember 
to come always from your highest truth of who you really are. That which is love. And so what that means is that you coming in when you release a friend, for example, or when you meet someone um, who is really creating a lot of ag agitation in your life, you, you meeting them with love is going to create a coherent wave that will come back to you in an infinite loop. But when you meet them from anger, from agitation, from insincerity, meaning you say you come from love, but it's actually not. And there's no judgment here. We all have done it. When we do that, it disconnects the infinite flow because it is not from the highest truth. It just is not love. That's all. And so to come back to what I spoke about, dropping into the zero point, the vortex of stillness is so powerful. And we get to enter that space truly in the way of tea over and over again every day. And this is the ripple effect that comes out once you close off the ceremony, once you come out from the vortex of stillness in, in state, you get the feeling of a ripple that's coming out of you, that's emanating out of you, just like what I'm doing right now. I'm emanating my peace codes to you. I'm, I'm emanating my light codes. And I am animating the new frequency that's come through for me today because I sit with tea every day. Yes, I am animating it as I speak with you, as I anchor this in with aligned actions because in this dimension as we materialize as a matter action is required for us to really live and experience and embody the expression of the divine i hope that makes sense yeah and so if you are in this place where you're really, truly ready to powerfully move as the embodiment of who you truly are, the way of tea is an exceptional way to start to really come into your multidimensionality where you can move through different dimensions. And also with the mentorship, you get to understand what is going on here. Like, where is this taking me? Why does it feel this way in my body? Like all the things and tea as a medicine on the very, I mean, this is a very intricate teaching. That's why I have a whole three month mentorship child out for the multidimensional woman for that. But what I can tell you is that tea is, has always been a shamanic medicine that's been used for ages. And I'm talking about tea from old growth indigenous tea trees in the mountains. Yeah. And this is something that is, um, we go, we go deep into this in mentorship space as well. And I can't really cover that here. It will take days and months and it's an experience again. What is going to happen is that you get to really feel into your connection with your true essence through your connection with nature that is encapsulated in the leaf. I always love this analogy and thank you, Gretchen. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your wisdom and your ability to express it so clearly. Thank you, Gretchen. I was honestly, I was just going to allow what was going to come through to come through. I'm really glad that it came through clar with, with clarity. So back to the analogy. I always love this analogy because it's so true. It manifests in our natural world and it's also the analogy to describe the infinite. The infinite Tao, as I call it, because Cha Tao, the way is the Tao. And for anyone who knows a little bit about Taoism or the yin yang symbol, the wholeness, the unity is actually the Tao. So when we move into a place of imagining the tree 
okay? The entire tree, if we look from the perspective of the tree, you're looking from the perspective of the infinite, yeah? But once the leaf leaves the tree, what do you think you're seeing now as the leaf? You're moving as the leaf, right? You're living as the leaf. But make no mistake, the leaf still encapsulates the entire DNA of the tree. Just as you are the expression, the fractal of the divine. The divine that is the tree and you are the leaf. And your potential, the limitless potential is absolutely in you. And this is all within you. It is all available and it is unleashed when you are willing to surrender to the mystery. To surrender, and this is something I'm going to say very clearly, the one who is surrendering is truly the mind. So that the higher mind can step in. The higher mind is in coherence with your heart mind and the lower Dan Qian, which is your womb space, or some of you call it the gut, right? So this is something that is really powerful. Once we really experience that and, it, and we continue to cultivate that, what we eventually receive in our, our experience is going to be transcendence, enlightenment, also known as ascension. Yeah, we have to be really um, devoted to our, our truth as all that is. This is important because, and I remember one of my teachers, like Gretchen was asking, you know, who are your teachers? One of my teachers in the Shaolin temples, I remember him saying this, and it's such a simple message. But I always feel, I, I honestly felt it in my heart when he said, to change the world, you've got to change yourself. And obviously that's not his native, you know, English is not his native language. So he, when he expressed it, I, I definitely felt the frequency of it more than the words he used. And this is the, the, the whole point, because ultimately, you are infinite. The only one who's here is you. You created a fractal of me to hear what you needed to hear today. And let me tell you, I guarantee each and every one of you would take away a different thing from today's conversation. So the fractals are incredibly powerful as an as an image as a light code that is awakened that has awakened something in you today just through sitting here and listening to what i'm saying okay so this is truly myself in my highest service my highest truth and highest love in every way, in everything I do, even if the external outcome doesn't look like the way my mind wants it to be, I always believe, I firmly and wavering know this, it is happening for me, through me, as me. And my only work is to continue to turn inward not to bypass anything and this is so important not to say i only want to go higher and i don't give a shit like i just want to go higher i don't care about the sadness or the anger let's let's just bypass it i'm not saying that i'm saying those emotions are your alchemical points to go deep into release into those points so that the alchemical medicine can be activated so that positive and negative yin and yang 
good and bad are all assisting you in your ascension, in your unleashing, in your journey back to embodying the expression of the divine. I hope that I made that very crystal clear because that is the most powerful thing you can ever do. And that's why my mentorship spaces are all about that. I never bypass anything. And I am very transparent about like, I am here to walk with you into the depth, into the deepest places, into the highest levels. But we're not bypassing anything. We're not bypassing them because I know that they are all here for you. They're here like signposts, you know, it's like saying that the sign saying go there and then you're like, no, 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 let's just keep going here. And then what happens is that you keep going round and round and round in a circle. And you keep running into the same thing. It's like, will you ever learn? <laughs> right? But this is the thing, like so many of us in the modern world are so used to running away from pain and suffering it happens because of that. Suffering doesn't have to happen. The only reason why it feels like suffering is because we keep repeating the same thing. And unfortunately, a lot of times, most of the world choose to keep doing the same thing because it feels comfortable. Most of the world is actually comfortable with the pain. But if you're here listening to this, if you're here with me, I mean, I have like 96 meditators with me here and I have Becky here on the other side. If you're here, I fully trust that you are already awakened and your awakening is going to continue as you continue to devote yourself to the truth. The truth where there is no duality, no comparison, and life is a miracle. Heaven on earth is here now. Heaven is on earth. Okay, this is so important. There is no bypassing. There is no like waiting until I'm doing really good and then heaven comes. And you can substitute the word heaven on with something else, obviously like paradise, whatever, if that doesn't resonate with you. But what I'm really saying to you is that when you learn that you are a reflection of the cosmos, you are a micro version of the cosmos, and you understand yourself so profoundly in the unseen and the seen realms alike. I mean, quantum science has already proven that whether one thing is energy or matter depends on the observer's decision. If the observer has decided that it is a matter, it becomes matter. If the observer thinks it is energy, it is energy. So how do you live your life? Decides everything. Remember, we all have free will. Okay. So unleash your limitless potential today. Do take that action that feels highly uncomfortable, but you know it's so aligned with your soul because your soul only ever wants you to ascend and expand. Okay? And this comes with really regulating your nervous system. That's why in everything I do in my mentorship spaces, we really work with mind, body, and spirit so that your nervous system is regulated and you are seen as one. There's no just separating the mind and the body here and the spirit or just working on spirit. We're working on all of it because even your body is an alchemical point. Okay, for some of you, maybe an overthinking mind, 
that is your alchemical point. Mastering the mind is very, very non-negotiable in your spiritual journey. Okay? And for anyone who is interested in learning more, please feel free to DM me. I would love to chat with you. Definitely connect with me on social media. And we can chat a little bit more inside as well. All right, my loves. I hope today's conversation has really lit something up in you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm just going to give a moment for anyone who has any questions before I pop off. And then I will call it a complete session, if not. <laughs> All right. Ah, Noni, so blessed to have found you following. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Becky blowing me a kiss, of course. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the hearts. All right, my love, sending you all big kisses. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.